Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dane Cook. Come on. Yeah. Keep it going for the comics you've seen tonight. Keep it going for the comics you've seen any night. Keep it, forget comics. Just keep it going for people who are kind of funny at parties. You know what? Fuck that. Just keep it going for people who say things that that aren't funny, but you laugh just to make them feel like they're not an idiot, and you just kind of go, ha, ha, ha. And then when they leave, you're like, what a fucking idiot. Keep it going for them. Keep it going for you, for you guys, yeah. <laughs> What's happening? You guys feeling good tonight? Yeah? I was over at your, uh, I went to one of these malls. You get a big mall going on over there. The Galleria there. Holy shit. I went over the mall. I, I had to park uh, nearby in the, in, uh, in the parking structure. You know when you're parking, you know the parking structure, you, you, you know, you go up at like, there's like 40 stories and you always have to park up on the fucking roof. What do they pave that with? What is that? That's not concrete. Whatever that's paved. You could be driving five miles an hour. It sounds like you're in a chase scene from Chips. It's like, <laughs> I'm backing up. What the fuck is that? You got sneakers on, you're trying to walk in. Where's the door? Keep it going for that joke. Keep it going. That's only the, the first of many. In fact, let me do that one again, just so we all feel like we're a part of it. You ever go to the mall there, the Galleria? There's a parking structure? What is that paved with? It's not cement. <laughs> then get this, right? I'm driving along, man. I'm driving, as I'm driving, I'm driving safely. I'm obeying the rules of the road. Whatever sign comes at me, I look at it and I go, okay. You got it, sign. Right, so I'm driving safely. All of a sudden, a guy in another lane, completely oblivious to me, he starts coming into my lane, just coming in. And if I didn't see him coming in, accident, but because I saw him, uh, I see, hey! Right, I see, I assess the situation. I see, I assess the situation. And then I, I eased on the brakes. I e as he's coming, I ease and I said what anybody here says automatically when this is happening. You can't help it, it just comes out. Ready? Ready? Um, hello. Um, hi, hello. Unless you're black, if you're black, it's a little different. If you're black, it's uh, check out this motherfucker. Check out this motherfucker. <laughs> if you're Chinese, it's ah! <laughs> So that's that's nice. <laughs> I go to a car accident, right? I got into this car accident recently, right? Not my fault. This car accident was not my fault, right? But you know how it goes. Get into a car accident, even if it is not your fault. The other person, they get out of their car, look at you like it is your fault. Even if it is clearly their fault, they get out there like, why did you stop at a red light and let me hit you doing 80? Why did you stop at a red light? Then you get out, right? You go, you start looking at the damage. You start looking, keep looking at each other back at the damage. Will you please come and look at my damage with me, sir? If we look together, maybe some magic will happen. This is hor- Feel this! This even feels damaged. Do you have tools? Can you fix this right now? This is horribly, this feels so horribly damaged. Even if I was blind, I would know this is horribly damaged by the way it feels. Then you gotta exchange the information, right? That sucks, because nobody ever has a fucking pen. You stand there, do you have a pen? I don't have a pen. Can you remember all my shit? Do you have a lipstick or something? A crayon? 
Right, so when you finally, here's what happens though, you finally get the information going, right? And you print your stuff nice and clean. There you go, there's my fa highlight, everything's nice. You give them, the, there you go, it's in an envelope, uh, yeah. <laughs> nice, but then you get their information and it looks like they had a fucking seizure while they were writing it. You're like, dude, you get a 28 digit phone number going on here, buddy. And under name, you drew a picture of a monkey fucking a coconut, what is that? <laughs> is your name monkey fucking a coconut, sir? MFC, is that you? MFC? That's a monkey. That could be a melon. Looks like a coconut. <laughs> then you take a second. Here's where it starts getting embarrassing, right? You take a second while you're doing the exchange. You just look around for a second and there's people everywhere. They're like building bleachers on the sidewalk and shit. People coming out of bushes. What, accident? <laughs> I'm gonna watch for a while. <laughs> wow, they're discussing it right there. <laughs> we love car accidents in this country. We're obsessed with car accidents. You know, I know you're like me. It's like two in the morning, right? It's dead quiet. You're in your house watching TV, you're in bed. All of a sudden, outside at the corner, you hear, ah! <laughs> Damn it. That sounded like it was gonna hit. You always want it to hit. Ah, come on! Nothing! Oh! And then when you finally hear the crash, you're psyched. It's like, ah, where are my shoes? Yes, where are my shoes? Have you seen my shoes? Fuck it, I'm going out without shoes. I'm going out shoeless. Right, you come out of your house, all your neighbors are coming out, everyone's coming out, you're, you're like waving at each other, you're psyched to see each other. Come on, let's go, you wanna go together? Come on, let's go. You, me, and you. No, no, you wait for the next group. You wait for the next group. Come on, we'll go as a team. No, no, you wait, you wait for the next group. And then you get out there, it's no big deal, but everyone stands out there for like two extra hours. It's over, no one's hurt or anything, but everyone has to stay out there. Even if it's hot, everyone acts like they're cold and shit. Hey, what's up? I just had to see what's going on. <laughs> and it doesn't matter who you start talking to, I guarantee everyone is having the same exact conversation. No matter who you get into it with, all anybody's saying like back and forth is, yeah, yeah well, no, I was in my kitchen and I heard it, so I came out. You were in your living room, I was in my kitchen cleaning a dish. I heard it, I came out. What, you were in your basement? He was in his living, I was in my kitchen cleaning a dish. I was really cleaning and I heard it, so I came out. What, shoes? No, no, fuck shoes. <laughs> shoes, <laughs> listen to this guy with shoes. <laughs> you, shoes over here. And everyone always wants to be a part of like the police. You know what I mean? We always want to be involved. We want to talk to the cops whenever they come near you. You know, officer. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just want you to know if it helps in your investigation. I was in my kitchen and I heard it, so I came out. I will testify in court. I was cleaning a dish. I will bring the dish as Exhibit A. And this guy, he was in his basement. Tell him what you told me. Tell him what you told me. That's not what he told me. He's lying. That's not what you told me. <laughs> Did you see that clip? They were showing like the other day on uh, like ESPN or whatever. They were showing like the, like the best crazy accidents or something. It was like the best or the worst car. You know, like they showed this one clip, man. If you saw this, this was nuts. The two gar cars go around the corner and they like catch each other. They start to roll. The tire flies into the stands, hits a woman in the face. And when you first saw it, you were like, oh! <laughs> that tire just hit that woman in the, in the face! Oh good, they're showing again. Look, 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 look. <laughs> look at this right here, slow it down. Yeah, that's when it hits her in the face. <laughs> and the funny thing is, everybody around the lady, like dove everyone got out of there, but she just like sits there like, <laughs> You see, everyone dives, and at the last minute, as the tire is rocketing at her face, this is her defense. She goes, ooh! Like she's just gonna get in a slap fight with a Goodyear. 
Like she's just gonna go and deflect it. Imagine she just palmed it. There can only be one Highlander. Tires cannot defeat me. What a horrible way to go. What happened to Mary? A tire hit her in the face. <laughs> How do you say that without laughing? A tire. I can't even do it now. How did Mary die? A tire hit her in the face. What was she doing putting her face near tires? No, 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 no. This tire hunted Mary down. This tire murdered Mary. This tire wasn't fucking around, as we like to say. This tire was out for vengeance. I don't want to die with a tire hitting me in the goddamn face. There's certain ways that people, when they bite it and they show it on the news, you laugh. Like when, when like, how do you, who gets killed by bees? Anytime they come on the news, they're like, oh yeah, a man was uh, in Austin killed by bees. I just fucking laugh. How do you get killed by bees? If you're walking through the woods, right? And, and you come near a bush and you hear Just, you know, run away from that bush. Who's going near that bush going, hey, is that, is that bees? Hold on one second, oh! Dude, fuck that. I would punch every bee in the face. Bees are not taking me out. I'd be like, yeah, fuck you, B. All right, B, come on. Yeah, bzz. Where's the next B at? It's a fucking B. I can understand if it was like killer horses. That's scary shit. Flying through the air, kicking you in the face. That's scary. Fuck bees. Fuck bees. are like sharks, did sharks get together and just go, let's start attacking people. <laughs> that guy in the news again the other day, a couple of days ago, he got bit by like a shark. <laughs> and the shark let him go. He was telling the story, they brought him back to the beach, which is just where he wants to fucking be, anywhere near the ocean again. <laughs> and the news reporter was like, what happened? Why did the shark attack you? Were you taunting it? Yeah, I go into the sea sometimes just to fuck around with the sharks. I have this thing called a shark rocket and I shoot it at them and it really annoys them. And then I just wade there in the water and they come at me, but I'm really good at eluding them. I know this hip move is something porpoises do and then I, I, I pretend I have a bottleneck and I stab them in the gills and it really is effective. He pulled up his shirt, it was like, he had the bite right fucking there. He told the story. He was like, oh, I was like 12 feet long, and I was just, I was swimming, and all of a sudden, ow! <laughs> oh, no! Right, so this fucking show, and then and she goes, well, how did you get away? He goes, I, I punched it, and he let me go. <laughs> let's, let's recap this. A fucking shark coming through the water. <laughs> right, and this guy, hey, the fucking shark goes, Ugh goes over to this guy, bites. This guy punches it in the face and a shark goes, all right! And tell me there is no time in your life you swim faster than when a fucking shark lets you go. You're just like, ah! You're on the beach, ah! Fucking shark lets you go. If you don't get pussy with that story. Wanna see my scar? Yeah, I punched a shark in the face. Tried to swim away, grabbed him, pulled him back. He tried to get away, grabbed him, punched him again. I, said, I grabbed him by the, th the big throat. I said, fuck you, shark. I said it. Well, the water was, so I was like, fuck you, shark. Because the water was in my mouth. <laughs> No one wants to drown. Drowning would be the worst, because everyone knows that feeling. That feeling that you get, oh, it's the worst when you think you're drowning. <laughs> like during the summer, you know, you're like, you know, at a pool party or something. I'm gonna go into the deep end, watch my dive, watch my dive. 
right? And then you dive in. And the second you get to the bottom, you're like, get me out of here! Where's the surface? And you always come up under the kid on the raft. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ, Timmy! Do not float above me when I'm dying in the abyss. Your son almost killed me with his uh, Daffy Duck raft over here, John. Your son tried to murder me in your pool. Float away from me. Float away. <laughs> fire. Has anybody here ever been fully engulfed in fire? It's got to be so hot. <laughs> that is way too fucking hot. It's the worst feeling when you burn yourself, too. Even a little, little tiny, you know, sometimes you're making some soup or some oodles and oodles or something, or you're cooking up some crack. <laughs> and you know, you touch the side of the pot, just, oh, whoa! That fucking kills! That little thing, you can't take a shower for like three weeks, you gotta like hold your hand out because the steam makes you angry. Try to bring your hand in, ooh! I hate steam! Whoever invented steam sucks! You know what would be the worst? This would be the ultimate worst right here. What if you dove in the pool, and while you were at the bottom of the pool freaking out, somebody poured oil on the surface and lit it on fire? Yeah, then you're like, oh, oh, oh! You could just keep swimming around, feeling for a spot where there's no fucking fire. Then what if you found a circle where there was no fire, but the second you came up, a big dude just punched you in the face? Get back in the fiery water! You don't come out of the fiery water. Cover up that hole with some fire now. Get back in the fiery water. When I was a little kid, I thought I wanted to be a fireman. I think a lot of guys, did you want to be a fireman when you're a little kid? People ask you, what do you want to be? I want to be a fireman. I didn't really want to be a fireman. I thought I did. What I, I just wanted to spray shit with a hose. That's what I really wanted to do. I wanted to be like a spray man. No, I was fucking good. I'm not laughing. I was really good with the hose. I could make it look like it, if I could make it feel like it was raining. If you close your eyes, you would think it was raining. That's how good I was. You'd be like, oh my God, it is really raining. It's very cold rain. That's how good I was. And I'm not laughing. You're laughing, I'm not laughing. I could not be a fire. If I got to a house and it was fully on fire, fuck that, I quit. I would just stand outside and watch it burn with everybody else. And the woman next to me would be like, please, my son, he's screaming in there. I'd be like, well, he's probably on fire. That's what happens when you're on fire, lady. You're, what are you doing out here, you fucking think for yourselfer? Why didn't you make a map for him or something? A policeman? I don't know how they do that job, man. <laughs> what about those cops in New York? I just saw this on CNN a few days ago. In New York, these cops freaked out. They shot at this guy like 15 times because they said they thought he had a grenade. He was eating a pear. How do you fuck that up? Unless he was eating it like, oh! That's a delicious pear! I had one uh, job that was kind of cop-like. One summer, I did uh, security at a miniature golf course. <laughs> Just standing out in the sun all day. Hey, hey, excuse me, sir. Get your putter out of the whale's ass. Come on, this is a place of miniature business. This is not a playground, even though it looks like a playground. So many crappy, the first job I had, right? The first job when I was uh, 17 uh, was Burger King. That was the first job that I had, right? I didn't want to call it Burger King either, cause like, you know, so I used to call it the BK Lounge. If the girls were like, where do you work? I was like, I work down at the BK Lounge. I'm a bouncer at the BK Lounge. Can we get in? Not without coops. Not without coops, baby. So I get the job because I have one older brother, my brother Daryl, he's the manager, and I'm like, this is gonna be awesome because my bro manager hooked me up. He was a dick. He thought he was the Burger King, you know what I'm saying? He sucked. He would put me on drive-through every single night. 
Why do this day do people insist on yelling at the drive-thru? It's modern technology. I'd have my little headset. Hi, welcome to Burger King. May I please take your order? Welcome! <laughs> Sir, welcome to London! <laughs> Excuse me, I'm fucking bleeding from the ears here, okay? Let's turn the main down a tad, okay, Skid Row? <laughs> Large fry, motherfucker! I can't hear you, Burger King! I would rather have had people yell. It was when people didn't talk loud enough. That drove me crazy. I'd have like 10 cars out there and I'd be like, hi ma'am, may I please take your order? What do you want? What do you want? I said, I said, butter seeds, no butter seeds. What do you want? What? No, 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 no. Yes, no, cheese, extra pickles. Uh, uh, what, how much? Uh, cheese. Damn, I can't. Hello? Pickle, extra pickles, cheese, butter seeds, ice, and pickles, all my pickles. Some extra pickly pickles. Cheese pickles. Okay, are you trying to molest me via drive-thru? What are you saying? Chicken tenders. Sweet sour sauce on my pussy. <laughs> Drive around, get some sauce. Drive around, ma'am. Sauce, sauce, sauce. She wants it her way. That's our motto. It's come on, sauce. I took, a, I took a lady's order one time. I'll never forget this. I go like this, I go, ma'am, that'll be 375, please drive around. And there's like this long pause, and then she goes, where do I go? Where do you go? You follow the one fucking road you're on to me. Where do you, okay, ma'am, you're gonna go to the Texaco station, take a right, go five and a half miles southeast, you're gonna see a guy in a yellow poncho. His name is Hank, he'll take you to the Whopper layer. That's where you go. And you've got 10 minutes to get there, or we take your food. <laughs> uh, oh, you're gonna have a little baby. I was like, you're pretty far along there. You're, what, uh, how long? You wanna have him right now? Can we force it or something? <laughs> Do you think he can hear me right now? You know, like some people put music on there. You know what I mean? Like, do you put the headphones on there? You do that, really? Do you guys still fuck? <laughs> Does he ever grab your cock inside and go, hey, I'm in here. <laughs> I can't hear you, BK Broiler. <laughs> Can I say hello to him? Can I get right up there and, and, and talk? Hi, hello. You know, he's in there like <laughs> Want to hear something really? This is a fact about me that you don't know. When I was in the womb, I used to jerk off. I, that's how young I started jerking off, in the womb. There's x-rays or whatever, CAT scans or sketches of me. And I'm like this, no! No! Yeah, I didn't even know if I was a boy or a girl, so sometimes I would pretend I was a DJ. No, I can't talk yet. Maybe this, maybe this. Maybe I do this or maybe this. I have not decided. What is this cord keep getting in my way? This. Why am I talking like a baby Mexican? Why did I just give myself that weird accent? <laughs> when I was a little kid, I'd fi I shared everything I had. One brother. Right? One brother, five sisters. Just, dude, I had to wear a tampon just to fit in. I swear to God. <laughs> Brutal. They used to dress me in their clothes and shit, you know what I mean? Send me to school in their fashions. I'm the only guy in eighth grade wearing like Wrangler jeans and jellies. Nice. Nice. 
Remember jellies? You get a rock in them. Oh! Oh! These shoes are trying to kill me. I got a brand new denim jacket. They bedazzled it and shit. I had a big glittery unicorn on my jacket. <laughs> no wonder I'm getting beat up in school. Hi guys, do you like my jacket? Oh. Oh. We never had a pool, right? So one summer, I remember my dad to make me happy. He knew I was bummed out because he didn't have the pool. So one summer he bought us this thing, it was yellow. You lit it on the lawn, spray with the water, run across. Slip and slide, yeah. Would have been fun if dad checked for rocks before he laid it down. Slip and bleed from the anus, they should have called this ride. I was like, watch this, mom. Ah! No! Ah! Yeah. Luckily, I was wearing that pad. I like that one. You don't have to. This is for me. <laughs> I was a weird kid, man. I had some troubles. I had some problems, ma'am. I had some problems. I couldn't spell when I was a little kid. I couldn't spell. So my parents got all concerned. So they went down to the, uh, the toy store. They bought me a little red box called Speak and Spell. You remember that, Speak and Spell? They shouldn't have called it Speak and Spell, but they should have called it Speak Like the Devil. Remember the voice? A E I O U. What was that? A B C D. That thing was evil. A L M N. That thing would wake me in the middle of the night, like two in the morning. Play with me. Get up. I want to spell right now. I'm eight years old, I spell great, I talk like a freak. I'm like, Mom, something is wrong. <laughs> something is W R N G. I had that game Operation. Remember the game Operation? Big naked white guy. He had no PP at all. He had no no scrum diddly umptious. He had no cash and prizes. He was like that guy from the movie Silence of the Lambs. Remember he tucked it in? Put the lotion in the basket. Put the lotion in the basket! <laughs> You're laughing because you've done it, you freak. You're a freak. You're a freak. I used to do it. I used to come out of my girlfriend's bathroom naked. I'd be like, look, I'm just like you. I was always afraid, like one time, she'd be like, oh yeah? Whoa. I'm just like you. I'm just like you. Monopoly. There's another one we had. We had Monopoly. Everybody did. Nobody liked it. Everybody had it. Nobody. Even if you think you liked the game, you didn't. And it's simple. Why? Ready? Because this is anybody here. Two and a half hours into a game of Monopoly. Ready? <laughs> Fuck this game. It's four in the morning, Grandma. You win. I'm sitting on Baltic with crack. I'm paying luxury tax out the ass. And I hate when you're the banker. Where'd you get the pink 50s, you cheating whore? Don't fucking touch me, Grandpa. Nana is a cheating whore. And I should cut your head off with this little doggy. <laughs> we were so poor growing up, that little iron, we had to actually use that little iron. It's not funny. It takes a long time to iron a shirt with that tiny little iron. Mm -hmm. so, oh, so hot. <laughs> you know what I hate? The one thing I hated growing up more than anything else, I hated being tickled. Tickling is the worst. 
because it started off fun, right? Tickling started, tickling, let's tickle. Started fun, ended horribly. Didn't it always escalate the same way? At first you'd be like, <laughs> come on, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Cut it out, stop it, I'm gonna throw up. And they couldn't stop, they were like, I had to punch my grandmother in the chest to get her off me. <laughs> I'd use a public restroom today. Whoa. Not the worst when you have to. God damn it. You just <laughs> you walk in, right? Here's the first thing. I don't care. Anywhere in the country you go. Why when you walk into a public restroom, why is everything fucking wet? <laughs> Right? There's puddles, water's all over the counter. It's dripping like you're in a fucking cave. What happened? Was there like a shaggy dog in there after a bath? Just came in and... And God forbid you have to use the stall, right? You go in there, you sit down, you try to close the door, which apparently Van Damme kicked in. Why are they all broken? Who was running in the bathroom like, I gotta shit! I can't shit with the door in front of me! door. I don't like being in a perfect square when I shit. Good. Broken. Like that. Now I can shit. Door. And you're sitting there, right? And you start to read. <laughs> you start reading like all the most evil, ignorant shit ever is all around you. You just sit there. It's not just written with pencil. It's fucking carved. <laughs> Who is carving on the toilet? Who is so pissed off while they're taking a crap? They're like, goddamn Jews! <laughs> ah, blacks! <laughs> ah! Here's my favorite, too. On the wall, someone always has to write, Mike was here. <laughs> But then somebody else puts an arrow and writes, Mike is a faggot. <laughs> like Mike is coming back to check it out. What the fuck is this? I was here, but not as a faggot. I'm trying to make a statement here. <laughs> There's always like a girl's number. There's always a girl's number. Has anybody ever fucking called? <laughs> How'd you meet your wife, John? <laughs> I was taking a crap. I'm a big practical joker, man. I love to play practical jokes. I have a great one for you guys if you get to try this, right? Really simple, very effective. Do this. Next time you're at the airport, right? This is fun to do. You're at the airport and you see somebody waiting for their flights, okay? They're sitting there reading the paper, whatever, just chilling out. This is what you're gonna do, just like this. You're gonna walk over to them really slowly just walk over, all right? Then stand right in front of them. Don't say anything, like, wait till they feel you there, you know what I mean? And when they finally look up at you, just really seriously look them right in the eyes and go like this. Don't get on the flight. <laughs> you know they're sitting there going, I don't think I should get on this fucking flight. I think an angel just told me not to get on the flight. Thank you, angel wearing jeans. How about this one, right? This is a fun one, right? All you need for this is a pair of gloves. Just take your gloves, right? And go down to the bank, get in line behind all the people at the bank, and give the person in front of you a little nudge, just a little nudge, they turn around. And when they turn around, start putting the gloves on and go, now would be a good time to leave. <laughs> yeah, right now. Either that or take out a piece of paper and pen and go, hey, how do you spell shoot you in the fucking face? <laughs> Come on, hurry up, one word, what is it? Here's a fun one, right? Guys, next time you, see, you go to a bar, you see a girl, she's hanging at the bar, just walk up to her and go like this. Hey, are you gonna walk to your car by yourself later? I'll be over here watching you all night. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I've been swearing a lot lately. 
You ever go through those modes where you just can't help but swear? Swear all the time? Fuck is like the best word ever. It really is. It's perfect. It's just fuck. It's because it's, it's, it's got the f and the uh and the cool. Fuck yeah. Yeah. When somebody finally says, hey, fuck you, there's nothing better. I just look at them and I go, yeah, that's right. Fuck me. Good use of fuck right there. You really got to emphasize that f too, right? When you say fuck, fuck. You can't, you got to hit the F. You can't go fuck. Doesn't have the same fuck. Can't just hit the K. Fuck. No. <laughs> this guy and I, we got in this little beef. We got in this little fight, right? And he yelled fuck you. And there's nothing above. Once somebody hits you with fuck you, that's it. There's nothing better. There's nothing about, you can't come back with, oh, fuck me, yeah, uh, gay lord. No, doesn't have the same. <laughs> then he gave me the finger. This dude gave me the finger. He gave me the best finger I've ever seen. You know, sometimes people give you the finger, it sucks. They're like, mm. <laughs> trick or treat. And you just laugh because it's, they don't know what, no form or anything. It's just a stump, this little pig, pig hoof. Yeah, that's a good one. This dude, he fucking was like, Bah! He fucking, it was huge. He had like eight knuckles, man. It was like a rocket. It went, It exploded in the sky and a thousand tiny fingers rained down on me. My friends took me out the other night. They weren't a, they were like, dude, we gotta go out, man. Let's go. I was like, I don't wanna go out. Come on, dude, let's go get some chicks. Yeah? Just like that? <laughs> what about that whole middle ground where you're an idiot? <laughs> no, dude, let's go get some chicks. <laughs> so they wanted to go out dancing, right? Which, we go dance, guys, we go to the clubs because that's where, you know, you go, the girls go. Girls go to dance. You get ready with your friends, Ten, let's, let's go dance tonight. Let's just fuck guys tonight. Let's just stand in a circle around our shoes and our pocketbooks and let's just dance. And if guys come near us, we'll taser them. No guys. You never hear a guy say to one of his buddies, hey listen, Mike, Michael, tonight dude, I gotta dance. What, chicks? No, no, fuck chicks, dude. I wanna dance. I just wanna express myself through the art of dance, Mike. I don't wanna see a chick. <laughs> and we just go to the club and we stand over in the corner and stare at you while you're out there. Mine, she's mine. <laughs> It's not like the old days where you come up, hi, may I have this dance, please? Yeah. We just fucking out of nowhere, bah, bah, hey, bah, 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 bah. what's up? Bah, bah, bah. Do you mind if I knock against you with my cock? Bah, bah. Just for about an hour? Bah. My denim cock? And the lights are blinking, so you're like, is he good looking? Is he fucking ugly? What is this? If he's good looking, that's fine, but if he's ugly. <laughs> right, if he's ugly, you turn back to your friends, you're like, help me. <laughs> oh, right, thank you so much. <laughs> you go dancing, right? Here's the thing, it's like, you know, I'm a young guy, but I don't care, man. The fucking music at the clubs is usually way too loud. That one beat all night, <laughs> right? And you're dancing, but in the back of your head, you're like, God, oh, this is kind of fucking loud. I would enjoy this if it was a little tiny bit lower. Just a little tiny bit. But then you realize it's so loud because you're dancing in front of the fucking speakers, you know? You didn't know, you're like, oh shit, we're right in front of the goddamn speakers. The whole place is fucking speakers. You think you're going into the bathroom, you're like, oh, I am in the fucking woofer. How did I get in here? Oh my God, don't go in that door. That's not the bathroom, guys. That's the woofer. They should put a sign that says the woofer because this is the bathroom and they just play that one beat all night. Somebody scream! Right, and all night, everyone, I'll scream. Then at the end of the night, three hours later, they turn on the lights, music goes off, and all you can hear for three days is You 
You leave the club, your friends are trying to talk to you like, mm-hmm, 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 If I ever get really rich, I'm just gonna open a bar. It's gonna be called Head. And if you come there, you know what the fuck's up. <laughs> It'll just be like 150 guys. Where are the fucking chicks, dude? Why aren't they coming out to Head? Because they're down the street at TGI Lick My Pussies. That's why. We gotta come up with some better apps because they're down at TGI Lick My Pussies. We always want head. We love it. We, love it. we always have to watch, right? Right? And if you get like a lot of hair, we fucking turn into Vidal Sassoon all of a sudden. We get like scrunchies and banana clips coming out of nowhere. <laughs> Hairspray. Good, good, good. Front row seats. I like that with the lips. The thing you're doing with the lips is good. You know what's so weird? Why does this happen? This is a weird thing. Phenomenon. Right? Sometimes, guys, you're having sex, right? And everything's going great. Everything's, you know, you know, right? All of a sudden, you hear like a voice comes into our, our brain, starts telling us to say shit. It's like, yeah, say that. Say that. That's perfect. Say that right now. Right? And you're like, yeah, fucking say that. You just grab our ha- hair and you whisper, yeah. You don't even think about it. You just say it. You fucking say, say things. You hear what I say? You like that, huh? Right, you say some, but sometimes you say some shit and then you think of it like two hours later and you're like, what the fuck was I talking about? And you get like embarrassed. I was with a girl recently, right? I was totally just in the zone out of nowhere. I was like, oh yeah, my dick feels like corn. Sounded good at the time. She didn't even miss a beat. She was like, give me the butter, baby. Give me the butter. Come on, over and Barker. Pop that pussy. We should just have an orgy right here, right now. Let's just turn off the fucking lights and everybody just feel around. Let's turn off the lights and play a game called uh, Who's In My Mouth? Would you say careful? What do you like, my lifeguard? Careful. <laughs> careful, Dane. What are you spotting my jokes? Careful. <laughs> careful. <laughs> I had this weird dream, man. And you know how like you have a nightmare and it's so intense that your you even your leg tries to wake you up. Your leg's like, get up! <laughs> your leg just kicks awake. And you wake up. I, I was this is the dream, right? I was being chased by a giant crab. It's not funny. This huge, like, 50-foot crab, he was chasing me down a beach. He was doing that crab run where he was like... (laughs) He was snapping at me with his little snappers. And he was, all night long, he was trucking. He was doing, like, 100 miles an hour. You know how, like, when you're being chased by, like, a killer or a beast in the dream, they can run as fast as they want, but you can't fucking... You're like, ah, come on! I can't move! But the fucking crab was like, <laughs> and his eyes were up here, and lightning was shooting out of his eyes, and he was wearing little loafers or something. I don't know. Oh, my leg fucking just went, get up! And I woke up for like a second, and then I went right back into the fucking dream, which only happens with a nightmare. You never like, you wake up, you know, it's like if you're having sex with like Cindy Crawford, you know how you wake up, but you try to pretend you're not awake, you know? Try to trick yourself. Oh no, I'm not awake. I'm in Cancun with Cindy. 
no. But I fell back into the into the dream, and the crab was like waiting for me. He was like, ah. <laughs> and I was like, not again. <laughs> All night long. And then I woke up and I called my buddy Mike. You know, I had to tell somebody. I was like, he picks up the phone. I'm like, dude, I had the weirdest dream last night. And he goes, all concerned, what was your dream? I go, I was being chased by a giant crab. What? Dude, what? All of a sudden, he's like, hold on. And I hear like pages. He's like, okay. I go, dude, what are you doing? He goes, I have a dream book. I'm looking up crabs to see what they represent in my dream book. Right, so all of a sudden, he goes like this. Dude, crabs, hold on, crab. Crab, dude, you're gay. That's why you were running away, because a crab represents sexuality, because it doesn't know which way it fucking... And that's why you ran away. You were running away from your gayness. I said, what, what, what the lightning? Uh, light, uh, emphasizes the gay, that's what it says. If there's lightning around the crab, you're super gay. That's what it says right here, super gay. He wasn't wearing loafers, was he? Oh no, because that would mean you were mega Ultron gay, like a superhero gay. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I used to have crazy dreams because, uh, well, do you remember that, uh, you remember Nestle's Quick? You know, the powder, you'd put it in your milk and you'd stir it for like 30 minutes and no matter how hard you fucking, there was still chunks of powdery magma that would float up and explode in your eye while you're trying to drink. Take a sip. Oh, God damn, sand missile just blew up in my eye. The movie Dune is in my chocolatey drink. I don't like when the movie Dune is in my drink. Crazy. When I was like five or six years old, I took the, the powder and I snorted it. Because I heard about speed, so I thought speed, quick, maybe there's some kind of connection. Connection. <laughs> so then I would have fucked up dreams because, you know, I was all hopped up on the queue, as we called on the streets. <laughs> I'd just be <laughs> on my big wheel all strung out. <laughs> What am I doing with my fucking life here, man? Yeah, I'll play kickball tomorrow. Tomorrow. I can't kick the ball today. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling the kickball vibe. And I'll tell you what dream used to scare me when I was a little kid. Used to actually totally give me nightmares. Remember those Kool-Aid commercials? Where that, no, that big talking bowl of punch, he would come crashing through your fucking wall in your living room. You wouldn't even know he'd just, oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right, and the little kids were all excited. Yes, yes. And then they would drink out of him after debris fell in his open, dumb head. He would pour himself, oh yeah, oh yeah. Him and his crazy tights. I don't like that. I don't like where juice wears tights. It's a horrible combination, a bowl of juice wearing tights. Fuck drinking out of him. If that was me, I'd be like, no, no, no. You fix that wall before my dad gets home from work. He's gonna beat me with a belt. He's not gonna believe a talking bowl of fruit punch came in here, you stupid idiot. Yeah, coming through the wall is real fucking cool. Using the front door is cool. Don't touch me, you drink. Don't touch me, you giant beverage. You are sweating or condensating. I will kick you in the tights and you will go down. You're very top heavy. You glass bitch. You glass bastard. Oh yeah, oh no. Naughty, naughty Kool-Aid. Oh yeah, no, no. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> Went to school growing up with a couple of my sisters, right? That was cool, that was all right. The girls in school would always make little paper things too. You know, the girls would make little. Pick a number please, pick a number. Four, one, two, three, four. Pick a color, please. Pick a color. Purple, P-U-R-P-L-E. <laughs> You're a faggot. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much. It was a great time. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks. Keep it going for Dane Cook.
Oh, man. Jeez. You guys are great. You guys are fun. This is going to get more fun. <laughs> this is the best job. I love my job. I do. It's like one of those things where it's like, you got to love your job. Because so many of us have horrible jobs. I think the worst feeling is when you wake up late for your job. Especially if it's a shitty job. Right? Because you, you wake up late for your shitty life. You're late for your crappy life. How awful is that? I'm late for what I hate. Ugh. Just ugh. With, with a, a side of ugh. And you know you're late, right? When you wake up. You just, you know it. Before you even look at the clock. You just get this feeling in your chestal section. <laughs> right? You're just... You're, you're so comfortable and cozy, and then you're like, oh, oh, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. You just know. And then you're, you're like, okay, wait, no, wait a minute, maybe I'm, and you look at the clock, and you're like, damn it, I am late. I hate that I'm like Nostradamus, and I predict that I'm late. I hate it, foreseeing lateness. Right, and if you have to be to work at eight, it's always like 7.54. Just enough time to do nothing to just lay there and go, I can't do anything. I can't even have an English muffin. What do I do? What's the one thing I want to do? You're gonna, you're gonna wear that fat sweater that keeps your stink in because you can't even shower. You look like Dr. Huxtable. You're like, hey, this is my Christmas sweater in July. <laughs> Don't start doing that or you puff out all the stink. Hey, I'm, I'm, out, I'm outraged today. Yeah, yeah, you can tell. It is the worst feeling, man. I'll tell you the latest I was, right? This is the worst. Here's the latest I ever was for work, right? I was 19. I was working at a video store, Video Horizons. Our movies are in your future. That was our slogan. Right, so I'm an employee there, and you know, I'm just doing my job. And then one day, the, the manager comes up to me, and he goes, Hey, Dane, guess what? Good news. Good news, sport. I was like, what? And he goes, you're the new manager of Video Horizons. Congratulations. And I said, oh my God, all my dreams have just come true. <laughs> and he took out these keys, and he was super serious. My boss was really serious. He was like... This is a lot of responsibility, Dane, okay? You gotta get in here on the bright, you gotta dust off the Uncle Bucks, you gotta, you know. <laughs> and he was so, he made me nervous. He was so, he was like, he was telling me stuff. He like leaned in, like he leaned in and put his hands on, and I'm leaning in with my hands on my knees, like we're going on a fucking treasure hunt together or something. It's like, <laughs> all right, where's the map, Huck? <laughs> I'll start in horror, you start digging and romance and he got all serious he was like all right seriously dane tomorrow's your first day friday it's a it's a heavy it's a heavy day a lot of volume a lot of units coming in and out of here and i was like okay okay and he goes so make sure you get in here on the bright okay open the store be in here by 8 30 have it open by nine i said yes yes sir and then he gave me the thumbs up i gave him the thumbs up and I was all jazzed. I was, I wanted to feel cool. I was like, hey, hey, throw the keys to me, right? Throw the keys, it'll look cool, right? He's three feet away, but I'm like, yes, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Go home, right? I get into bed that night. I'm like, I am the new man. Yes, okay, right? Go to sleep. All of a sudden, <clears throat> I wake up. I'm like, I'm late, I'm, I'm late. I look at the clock, okay? It's 1.45 <laughs> in the afternoon, baby. That's like five and a half hours late. <laughs> and talk about, st I'm just staring at the clock, just hoping it's gonna sprout little legs and be like, I'm just kidding, ha ha ha. I was just being a stupid clock, playing stupid clock games. Let me set it back. <laughs> don't do that, clock. I don't like when you play stupid clock games. <laughs> but it did not sprout little legs. I just laid there swearing at myself <laughs> and here's the thing there's no excuse for five and a half hours late <laughs> there's always a good lie when you're 15 minutes late you can walk in hey wow I am so sorry 
that I am 15 minutes. Did you? Uh, my muffler was in a spark set a woman's sundress on fire. And I had to go over in a human blanket, and that's why I'm late. I am sorry I'm late. I was shot in the head. And then I had to have laser corrective surgery so the scars wouldn't show. You can't see the scar, but I was shot on the way to work. No excuse for five and a half hours late. He was waiting there for me. He's like, where, where were you? And again, I was like, you know, I forgot to dress. I'm nude. I'm like, hey. He was yelling at me, but there's no, again, there's no good. I was trying to come up. What's a good five and a half hour late? Except, Mark, you didn't, did you hear what happened? The uh, circus animals that got loose and took hostages? I was one of the hostages. The gazelles were dancing on my chest. Then he called me some name, he called me something. And I, I just snapped, I was like, hey, fuck you. And then I'm like, oh, damn it. I didn't just do that. And it was like, huh? What? All the videos are rattling on the shelf. Fire starts coming out of his back. <laughs> what did you say? And all I'm thinking, shit, I'm gonna get a horrible reference. There goes my goddamn reference. But then I thought, fuck it, since I'm gonna get a bad reference, I might as well beat the shit out of him or something. Take a crap on his chest. <laughs> and punch him continually in the neck, right? Who's gonna believe that if they call for a reference? Well, he dumped on my chest and then he punched me continually in the neck if that's the kind of man you want to hire. And they're like, you got the job. This, you're right, he is a Looney Tune. Welcome, welcome to Kinko's. Oh, jeez. Ha, ha, ha.